had some questions concerning our apprenticeship program, which is also part of what these events are all about. Um, because once again, we're not wanting to just talk about is important or that somebody should do something like somebody out there needs to do something about the problems. But our schools are actually actively engaged in, of course, trying to make a difference, which of course is what we're talking about here. Don't run from the world, but to change it means trying to make a difference. And so our apprenticeship program is part of that. Uh, Reverend Aaron Slack went over earlier in his speech yesterday concerning that a little, a little bit more. And there are one, two, or three year uh, options for people that might be interested, or if you know somebody, a young person that might be interested as well. Um, for those people that, of course, I heard somebody tell me one time, well, what can happen if I come for one month? Well, you get one month of training, which is not much. Uh, what if you came for one year? Well, you get very basic instruction uh, and some very basic skills, um, but it's only one year of ability. You've only been doing something for one year. So there is basic instruction and basic skills. Uh, if you're here for two years with us, you would have a very moderate understanding of how school runs and operates, and you have definitely some proficiency in being a teacher, an educator. And for three years, of course, you have a very thorough knowledge overall, and a very advanced ability in handling a variety of topics. So in other words, basically it comes down to this. The more experience you have, the longer you're doing something, the better you get at it. So you can't think you're going to be able to come in even if you purchase the manual, which we have already talked about, um, I'll talk about in a minute as well, um, the information alone is not enough. Uh, you have to be able to actually have someone show you how to use it, or be good at using it. Uh, I can't just go out and purchase a mechanic's book on how to fix my car and just know how to fix my car. Uh, it's just going to take some time for me to learn how to do that, especially if a person like me I have no mechanical abilities whatsoever. So you have to have a practical understanding that everything takes time. And there are some people who think that you can just get some magical words and you can become a good teacher. Or if you just feel like you want to really love long kids. I have met people who just thought they loved kids, but then when they got into the classroom, they found out that the kids weren't exactly what they had in mind or had envisioned. They thought that children every day would be rainbows and lollipops, and every day the children would come in and give them hugs and to tell them that they loved them as a teacher. And they came out and found out very quickly that that is not children. Uh, this person has a very faulty view of what children are because they really have a basic faulty view of the nature of the child. Yes, children will love on you. Yes, children will have smiles and all the rest. But then you have the children on certain days where they're kicking and screaming and dragging themselves across the floor. So you have a very uh, good understanding that it takes time to learn to do something well. And so uh, we make no problems about it with us. Uh, we will train you to the best of our ability, but it also is like Dr. Dumar was talking about, your perseverance, your consistency. Um, there are, you really have to put yourself into it. If you're not committed to something, you won't succeed. If you come to something half-heartedly, you will not succeed. And so even though we bring people in for one, two, or three years and train them, I do get the question sometimes as well, what is your success rate? In other words, can I come to your program and just be automatically successful at all the things you're talking about? Well, a lot of that depends on your abilities. Uh, I could hand you, once again, the musical concept we were talking about. I can hand you a guitar, give you some guitar lessons. You might be able to play the guitar pretty well, read music, but it doesn't mean you're going to become a rock star um, because you've had some training on stuff. A lot of being a teacher, or as Dr. McIntyre was talking about yesterday during the Q&A, or running a school depends on your gifts, your abilities. Um, so what we're talking about here is doing our best to help those people that feel led to be a teacher or think that they would like to run a school. Um, and so these are some of the options we do have. Our operations manual, we were discussing this, um, is what we train our apprentices on. And kind of gave you an overview yesterday of what it was, now I'm going to give you some more specifics on what we actually train the apprentices to do. And this will be real fast. Uh, practical advice. Um, there's some things in there, things you need to toss out, much like the real nature of children, or they really like to work at school, or really like to be a teacher. There's a lot of things people come with preconceived ideas that they really have to toss out of their heads if they're going to learn how to run a school and be a teacher. And some other things on there as well about how to actually get financing, choosing locations. So if a person is going to leave uh, us and go someplace else and do this, there's things they're going to have to discuss about in detail. There are some people that want to have a five minute conversation about how to do those things. It's not a five minute conversation. Uh, and so this is where we come up with the apprenticeship. Managerial duties, and I'm not going to read the full list of these things, but as you can tell, uh, man managers have a very good job. Uh, people do think that managing is a simple task. That's a person who's not a manager talking. 
I do talk to a lot of managers who manage restaurants and other types of businesses around, and I manage a school, and we can always swap stories. And we always sit around and talk about how the people who aren't managers always think that being a manager is simple. It's not. There's a lot that goes into it. And uh, our apprentices do learn how to be managers and uh, the immense amount of responsibility that goes into that. They learn how to deal with infants and toddlers because not only do they have to know what the regulations are, they have to know how to teach somebody else to do it and do it properly. And there's a million things you have to learn about infants and how to handle them. Uh, three to five year olds, and you see the list gets bigger, uh, the more responsibilities you have, infants have pretty basic care. Once you go into older children, three and five year olds and up, so this is toddlers and all the rest. There's a million things that you have to learn between doing daily health checks and attendance, song times, abilities, what to do when kids get sick, what kind of discipline policies you need to have in place, rewards and photo programs, tons and tons of things a person has to learn if they're going to run a school. Uh, basic school structure, ideas, uh, lots of different stuff about curriculum and Bible lessons, uh, how to handle state authorities and what you should and shouldn't do, lots of things a person needs to learn. Uh, sales, advertising, and public relations. A school does not operate because it's just there. You have to let people know that you're there, and there's lots of things that lead to the success of that. If it's advertising, or if it's the person when you call up on the phone, and they're a nice person. There are lots of people who actually think they run schools, put somebody on the desk, and when they answer the phone, they're not polite, they're not nice, they're not helpful, and the person goes to the next school, so they will be helpful to them. And uh, so there's lots of different stuff that goes into this as far as learning how to properly uh, do sales and advertising for a vocation. Uh, teacher orientation, um, this is how you can train your teachers. And there's a ton of things you have to train teachers about and how to do. And once again, this is like that stone we were talking about, it's a never ending task. So for a person who's gonna run a school, they have to be able to train teachers. There's special programs that our schools do that most schools don't do, which do lead to the success of many of the programs we have. Uh, we have social networks, we do piano, piano instruction, dance instruction, karate instruction. We do Christmas and graduation programs and recitals. Uh, we do yearbooks and photos and meal programs. Tons of things we do and that we would suggest that the person's running the school, they should mimic what we do as these things. And of course it takes time to learn what the, how those work. Cleaning and maintenance of a building. Once again, being a teacher, it's not just about coming in and having a fun time with kids. You actually have to have a clean building. In fact, I'd say one of the biggest turnoffs from people whenever they come into a school, they're trying to decide what school they want their children to be in, this right here is one of the most important things you can do. Keeping a clean and maintained building. If you can't do that, you're going to be a failure as a school. And that takes time to learn. If everybody could do it, everybody would be clean and everybody would have a good reputation. They don't, because they don't know how to do this very simple task. But apprentices do learn how to do this. Office and accounting. Uh, this is uh, also something that's very important. This is on the business aspect of things, but it also goes into how to take payments, billing, uh, uh, on the bottom you see billing disputes. How to handle problems is actually probably one of the biggest issues you run into, because it's not just simple, I'm going to give you my bill. There's always a million excuses why somebody can pay, can't pay, or whatever might happen, and you have to go to work with people because you're dealing with the general public. And the general public sometimes always wants an exception for themselves and will consider you the bad guy. And I use an illustration of this concept when somebody does have a dispute sometimes, they don't want to pay for child care for that week, they want to pay two weeks from now. And uh, sometimes when I finally get down to the bottom of it, when they're really not being reasonable, and I'll say, well, you can't go to the supermarket, fill your shopping cart up with groceries, walk up to the cashier and say, I'll catch you in two weeks. They all automatically know that that type of concept is theft. You cannot walk out. It's called shoplifting. But well, they seem to want to do it with child care or our type of industry. So building disputes and things like that are something you have to worry, worry about working with. And office and accounting is something that uh, all the apprentices learn how to do. Now, hopefully this gives you kind of a very short, summed up view that running a school, being a teacher, is not super simple. It does take training if you're going to do it correctly. And once again, most schools are not successful. Uh, most schools last five years at maximum. And those are the really good ones. Uh, most people don't, if they have a manager, the manager might last three years or five years and then they're gone. Teachers might last six months to a year and then they're gone. And in fact, running a building is very difficult, so it's not something simple to do. It's not an easy task, and not just anybody can do it. And so if you want to learn how to do those types of things, be a successful teacher, uh, be a successful owner-operator, then you do need to find the people, like us, that are doing it successfully. We have over 30 years of success. Our business model absolutely clearly works. Some of the discussions we've had so far this uh, last two days, I hope, have made you understand just how successful we are at what we do. And so if you want more information on this, about the program, all the materials we went over yesterday, 
go to our website, which is gcsapprenticeship.com. On there is lots more information about the materials, about the schools in general, about the apprenticeship as well. So this is where I'm going to point anybody to that is interested, or if you know someone who is interested, because we are very much, once again, you cannot create Christian teachers. You cannot create Christian owner operators, but you can recruit them. There's people that have skills. Whenever you have a person who is a uh, scout for athletics, that I'll go into a school and pick people who have no athletic ability and bring them over and say, we're going to make you a superstar. No, they scout for people who already have talent, already show ability, already show aptitude, and they bring those people in and recruit them and they scout these people out, and then they train them, and then they help them, and then they can, of course, move further on, potentially, in order to succeed. And so that is also something that we hope people get across to this, because just because you want to be a teacher or you think you like to run a school, doesn't mean you necessarily have the calling, as Reverend Aaron was talking about before. But we are definitely, uh, as an organization, looking to recruit people that think that they have the ability to be a school teacher or to run a school, and we are here to help you with our ability and our programs or our materials. So um, thank you very much. That is our presentation for this. But I do want to thank all the speakers that were here for us for these last two days. I definitely want to thank everybody who was able to come in person. Thank you for being here with us. Once again, if you'd like more information, you can speak to us a little bit afterwards. Uh, but mostly, I'm going to direct you to our website in order to communicate with us more in-depthly um, after today. Um, because most of the discussions we're going to want to have, or you're going to want to have, or the questions you're going to have, are going to be a little bit more in-depth in a five-second conversation we might have today. And so I do want you to understand that um, it's not that we don't want necessarily to speak to people in depthly, but it does, any conversation you're going to have about apprenticeship or running school is not a five minute conversation you're going to have before you get your car and leave. And so uh, the website will let you get in contact with us, uh, with me specifically as well, and we can definitely help you further with any questions. I want to thank you for coming. Specifically, I want to thank uh, Dr. Damar for being here. If we can give him a round of applause, please. Any more questions, go to our website and thank you very much. End of our day.